get started? You can, it's up to you. Allah, Allah, oh, it's okay. All right, we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, my name is Michelle Tadros. I'm going to be speaking about Acts, that's St. Athanasius and St. Cyril's Coptic Orthodox Theological School. I'm going to introduce the team, but I do want to mention that HTC is having the mic. Sure. Perfect. Um, HTC is having their annual Christmas festival November 18th and 19th. And 19 and 20. Thank you for the correction. Um, we have this poster board. It's got sponsorship opportunities. Um, it's sort of all hands on deck for our church. If you could pull a tag, review it, pull a tag that you're interested in, uh, write your name and phone number on the back of the tag, and then bring it. Um, you can, I'll leave this box. I'll leave this box on the table. If you could put it in the box, uh, we will be contacting you to collect this item. So I'm going to pass this around while I speak. Uh, I want to just say one thing. There's a lot of, the tree downstairs, there's more. So if this is done, there's more downstairs. There's more downstairs. Lots, lots of opportunities. OK. All right. We can just leave it here. OK. So. Um, I, has anyone heard of St. Athanasius and St. Cyril, Coptic Orthodox Theological School, besides my husband oh, you, and my mother? Um, <laughs> fantastic. Um, His Grace Bishop Corollos um, in the diocese manages Christian Education Department in addition to um, ACTS. And so Christian Education Department uh, prepares the curriculum for uh, Sunday school, they prepare servants through servant certification, and then ACTS is a graduate theological school that prepares priests, laymen like, like my myself that just want to um, increase their faith or want to learn more about how to defend your faith. Um, and so we have quite a few HTC staff members at, um, <laughs> at ACTS. So I want to introduce them. Um, so this is Grace Selim. <laughs> she is Director of Operations and Registrar. We have uh, Dr. Linda Abdel Sayed, Artesoni, uh, Professor of Psychology, and then Dr. Sarah Marcos in the back. Sarah is the Associate Dean of Academic Affairs. And then I'm the Director of Admissions and Student Affairs. So like half of ACT staff comes to this church. And I cannot believe we have not had an information session. So <laughs> we, I'm going to zip through a few slides. This is casual. If you have any questions, um, feel free to, to ask. Claudio, can you do next? OK. So today's agenda, a little bit about ACTS, why study theology. ACTS programs, international students' time commitment, courses, tuition, and financial assistance, and then application deadlines and program start dates. Next, please. OK, so a little bit about ACTS. You know that it is half of um, the diocese's sort of responsibility uh, to educate our congregants, OK? Um, it was established by His Holiness Pope Shenouda III, um, and he had a vision to create theological schools across the world. Um, ACTS is actually the largest Orthodox theological school in North America. There are a number of them. Um, we have an on-campus Coptic library, access to an expansive theological digital library, and then all of our programs can be completed 100% online. Um, with regards to um, the campus, we will, God willing, have courses, I saw Sarah, <laughs> courses um, in person in the near future in a post-COVID world. Next, Claudio. OK, so this is a little bit about ACTS at a glance in numbers. We have 234 active students. 95 were enrolled this past fall. Um, we offer scholarships, which we will get into. 
and um, 17 new students this past semester. Next. Okay. So I have, um, we have a visitor coming. He is actually an alum and TA. So he's gonna chat about why study theology, but these are a couple of reasons why our faculty uh, believe you should study theology. Next, Claudia. Okay, I'm gonna jump into program, programs, admissions, requirements, and courses. Next, Claudia. Okay, so there are actually four ways to study theology at ACTS. We offer graduate certificate programs, which are sort of a low commitment uh, route. It's four courses and it takes one year to complete. Then a master's of theological studies, uh, which takes two years or less, and then a master of theology. Next, please. Okay. so. Graduate certificate programs are four courses, and you can get an idea for the types of courses here. So you would take two in your first semester, one in your second semester, one in your last semester. Yeah, so it's um, early Christian studies or orthodox scripture, so two uh, graduate certificates. And when I say graduate certificate, it requires that you have a bachelor's degree for a certificate or that you have completed 50% of your bachelor's degree and are co-enrolling in a bachelor's program. Next. Um, admissions requirements are pretty straightforward. Online application, official transcripts, letter of recommendation, and a brief statement of purpose. Any questions on the graduate certificate programs? What's that? Oh, 18 years or older. <clears throat> okay, next. Sorry, what was that? A statement of purpose. It's just a prompt and initially, essentially, um, why are you interested in studying theology in 500 words? It's really just to see, um, for the admission staff to see your commitment, to see your motives, and to, to check your writing as well. Yes, or for a graduate certificate, you have to have 50% of your bachelor's completed. For the master's, you have to have a bachelor's degree. Yes. So um, there is one prerequisite course, which Sarah teaches. Um, it's Introduction to Theological Research and Writing. Sarah, can you talk about, <laughs> about then why, why that's a prerequisite? And we're going to talk about all of the courses shortly. Um, I've posted them actually all right here. I would encourage you all to come up and just take a look at the types of courses being offered. Hi. Sarah. Hello, everyone. Oh, OK, I don't like this. <laughs> um, I teach theological research and writing. It's an introductory course, because most of the classes I ask require a research paper. And that's really how you delve into um, learning about those subjects. Like, you really need to um, do a survey of the reading, see what's out there, and then be able to kind of join the conversation with your own paper. So it's a very easy class. I don't feel that many people. <laughs> and it's a fast fail class. So it's, it's pretty enjoyable. And um, it's a good way to start. Yes, it's a prerequisite. Um, and that's it, really. <laughs> um, how long? Is that what I heard? Uh, it's just a semester a class. So it's like 16 weeks. But each class is how long? It's 15 weeks. Yeah, 15 weeks. It's like a semester. Oh, each class? So it's like a few hours. So each normal class is around two to three hour lectures. My classes aren't that long. It's like probably the longest is like an hour and a half because, or maybe, yeah, that's probably the longest um, because we focus really on writing the paper um, and like we go back and forth and, you know, the students turn in their paper and I give them feedback and that's really just the focus. And then usually that paper, you use it in a different class. Um, so like, if you're also enrolled in a patristics class, um, you'd be writing a patristics paper for that class anyway, so I kind of like to kill two birds with one stone. And, so um, Sarah, um, students ask, is it too much to take the two courses? It's, it's not, because you're using the research paper. Yeah, right? yeah. Um, so, so it helps. It just helps to learn how to. Are they live courses, so it's like Monday at 7 p.m.? 
So a few courses, courses are live. Mine right now is not in the live stage because I have kids. <laughs> um, but yeah, they're pre-recorded. And so um, the way my class is structured is I put up like a recording on Thursday night and then I give the class like a week to um, watch it. And then homework is usually due that Wednesday before um, so that I can give feedback the next day that Thursday. Um, but um, some classes at Axe are live and they like the, the, the live participation and then other courses are pre-recorded and then kind of same structure. Anything else? Okay, thank you. You should stay up here, Sarah. We're gonna talk about study, we're gonna talk about study abroad. Next, Claudio, please. Okay, so the Masters of Theological Studies program is one of our most popular programs. Um, it's a 36-unit degree program, typically completed in two years. You'll study items such as liturgy, scripture, dogmatics, apologetics, and patristics. Uh, you do have to take two courses per semester to enroll in the Masters of Theological Studies program. Next. Um, similar admissions requirements, you do have to have a bachelor's degree um, in order to enroll in this program. Uh, next, please. The Masters of Theology is, I call this for the more advanced theologian. Uh, you actually have to have an MTS degree already or a Masters of Divinity or similar program in order to even enroll in this. So AXE is really great because we have something for everyone. So if you want low commitment, you enroll in a certificate. Then you can transfer into the MTS. And then if you want to continue your studies, you can enroll in the THM. Um, and God willing, in the near future, a PhD as well. Next. And next. Um, if anyone has received a bachelor's degree outside of the United States, including Canada, we do ask that you have your uh, bachelor's degree ev uh, transcripts evaluated. Um, so that's just an extra step. And typically, you can test out of the TOEFL exam. Next, please. Um, time commitment, that came up. Um, this is a pretty rigorous um, institution, and so um, we like to show our students this calculation for every three units, which is one course. You can expect to have three hours of faculty instruction per week and six hours of out-of-class student work per semester. So nine hours of work a week per course. Next, please. And then we have a lot of students um, with the ultimate goal of receiving an MTS degree, but are worried about the time commitment. And so we have developed what we call the certificate program track, which is essentially in your first year earning your first certificate, so let's say in early Christian studies, and then in your second uh, year completing your Orthodox Scripture certificate, and then in your third year, completing just the remaining courses for the MTS. So it's, it's a little bit of a slower pace doing it that route, and it takes two and a half years uh, to complete uh, two certificates and the master's. Next, please. Okay, so here are some examples of our courses being offered in the spring semester, which begins January 9th. Um, Sarah, do you want to come chat about the courses real quick? <laughs> Bring Zachary. Um, again, I've, I've pasted them all here, so you can come read the, the course descriptions, but maybe highlighting them, and then I'm going to ask um, Linda as well to chat about her course. Okay. I have a little guest with me. <laughs> okay, so let's just, um, okay, so Intro to Patristics with Father Daniel Habib. Um, it just kind of goes over church fathers um, and in a sense also the church history. So you'll be learning you know, about St. Athanasius, St. Cyril, all the different church fathers. Um, that I believe is a pre-recorded class, but they're working on maybe this next, um, uh, this next semester, making it part live or maybe like a hybrid, it'll be um, new recordings. Um, and then there's introduction to liturgical studies with Father Arsenios. Father Arsenios is actually is the expert on liturgical studies, and people want him like from all these different universities. So um, this is actually like a really good opportunity because um, he's like the best in the world. Um, 
for liturgical studies. Um, likewise, Dr. Eugenia, um, the next class, Introduction to New Testament, she is wonderful. She actually got her PhD from Harvard and teaches all over. Um, right now she's teaching at the Franciscan Institute um, in San Diego, and she was teaching at um, University of San Diego, and students love her class. Um, she's teaching this class, New Testament, and she's also teaching the Gospel of Matthew, and she really does like an in-depth um, like survey of the gospels. She's done um, all the gospels so far. She hasn't touched, uh, she hasn't um, gone over Matthew yet. This is the first time she's offering it. Um, so that Dr. Eugenia is a wonderful, wonderful person. If you, uh, great um, to take her intro class and then delve into her more advanced gospel courses. Right now she's take, uh, teaching a Pauline course that students just love. Um, and then Linda, Dr. Linda, um, who can be to so talk about her course. Uh, Oh, okay, we'll get to her right now. And then uh, Father Arsenios actually is teaching another course, the Coptic Eucharistic Liturgy. He is teaching this course um, with the Pontifical Institute, um, like the institute in Rome that belongs to um, the Pope. He's teaching it um, like a high, like there and here at the same time. So it's offered, I believe, Wednesdays in the morning so that the students in Italy um, can join in as well. Um, so that's actually like a really good, um, opportunity because you're taking like a course that like students that are in the Vatican are also learning. Um, and then Deacon Severus, History of Coptic Patriarchs, Deacon Severus is also very, very thorough and you'll learn so much. This is the first course that we're offering on Coptic Popes. Um, so very interesting. And then, sorry, I skipped Father Eugene. He is also great. Um, he got his degree also from Harvard and he um, teaches at Holy Cross and I believe he teaches some courses at Harvard as well. So you're kind of getting a Harvard course for, you know, nothing. <laughs> um, and he's teaching Christ in the Old Testament. So he's, he's really um, looking at the, um, all the types of Christ in the Old Testament and giving you an academic kind of view on that and also a very good spiritual view on that. And then um, Dr. Linda Abdul Sayed, who will talk about her course. And Linda, I want you to, <laughs> if you could also chat about why psychology is being offered at ACT as well. At ACT. So um, let me start with my class and then we can go backward. But this semester, I'll be teaching culture shock, is what we're calling it, but it's multicultural psychology. Um, and the way that, why do we teach psychology at ACT is because it's a practical way to serve others. It's a practical way of understanding people that we want to serve, understanding families. So the other class that I'm not teaching next semester, but I generally teach at ACT is Psychology of the Family. And I'm structuring it very similar in that we talk about theory, different theories of human interactions and why people do the things they do, why families act the way they act, communication dynamics and things like that. Every week is a different theory. And then the students in the class And once we understand potentially what's happening, then they know how to intervene and how to help support. So it's a practical way of understanding the theology, the service um, dynamic. Cultural, di cultural shock, cultural, multicultural psych is what we're teaching this semester. And it's the same type of idea. Understanding how culture, as well as spirituality, impacts human development who we are, what we think, what we do, our values, our morals are based on our culture. Um, whether it's in opposition to our culture or in acceptance of our culture, it is information that we weed through to give us a guidepost of what is right and what is wrong, and how do I know if I am good or bad. It's based on our culture and on our faith. So we integrate spirituality and culture in the class. <clears throat> and too much coffee, I'm like jittery. <laughs> Um, and bring in, again, we'll bring in our families, bring in people that we're serving, and understand ourselves through the discussions that we have in the class. My classes are always live, and they're never recorded, um, so that there's, a limit, there's a, a limit of confidentiality that I try to uphold in the classes, so you can feel free to speak about the, the families that you have questions about yourself.
They are evening, typically six to nine. I think that's yeah. true for all of our courses. Yeah, they're most, mostly working professionals. Right, yeah. except that one. <laughs> Thank you, Linda. Claudio, next. Um, I want to introduce you to um, a former alum. He was actually our valedictorian in 2019, um, Carlos Gerges. Um, his home church is St. Justina in Rancho. <laughs> uh, like, thank you. Um, Carlos, uh, can you just chat about your experience at AXA and why you decided to enroll? AXA is no good. Don't go there, please. Oh. <laughs> um, so, like she kindly introduced, I was a valedictorian in 2019. Um, and just to give you an idea, uh, I'm a federal investigator for a living, and I have a family of a wife and two kids. So to do that and be valedictorian tells you how uh, fitting the program is for anybody who has a busy job and a family with two boys. And uh, God bless my wife. She tries her best, and she does wonderful. So couldn't do anything without her. So um, the program is uh, really designed for working professionals. Uh, classes are typically in the evening. Um, and even the classes that are, you know, set up to be in the afternoon, they're usually pre-recorded. Um, we have one class right now by Dr. Constantino, for example, uh, for Introduction to New Testament. Um, she teaches at 2 p.m., but even if you can't attend at 2 p.m., which I have to tell you most people can't, um, she records and it's posted for you to watch later. So the program is very much designed for anybody who has a busy schedule um, and can manage to uh, attend whenever they can. Um, during my time at the school, um, I w had the pleasure of being able to assist in one class. I think it was liturgics while I was there, but it was a much smaller program. It got a little bigger since. Uh, I don't think they let active students do that anymore, but we were much smaller at that time. Um, now, after graduating, um, out of the kindness of their hearts, they've asked me to come back and help as much as possible. Um, and I really, really, really enjoy uh, helping out in the classes and helping the program. It's now grown quite a bit. Uh, wonderful people with the, with the program now, like Michelle and Grace um, and others. Back then, it was just with Timothy uh, and uh, Jessica. It was like two people, really, that <laughs> did everything, and Mina. Um, and so now there's uh, much, uh, many more people, and we have you just introduced a, 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 an email account that where if you have technical issues, you can. It's become really like formal now, which sounds kind of silly, but um, it really is like a like a. I hate to say it's a legit program now. It's always a legit program, but it feels much more like a just a traditional college program now, like any other ones you've seen. Um, with the added benefit of you get to learn theology. Um, so to that effect, um, not that you need to be talked to and in, talked into studying theology, but there is tremendous benefit to it. Um, for me personally, I was always teaching Sunday school anyway before before going to Acts. But one of the things that happened when I finished uh, Acts was. Um, when I speak to groups, either like this or my own Sunday school kids, um, it's not a matter of pride, but it's a matter of authority. You can speak with some authority because you've studied, you know where to research things, and I think the biggest thing you walk away from Acts with is, and I always tell people the same thing, is knowing where to find, you know, resources. You know, before going to Acts, I really didn't know, and research and writing class with uh, Sarah in the back is, is, is really the, it's probably the one class, it is the one class that everybody has to take period. Um, and it's one of the most important ones because even though it's not particularly a theology class, it is really about being able to find the right resources and being able to use the right resources and knowing that you can speak more than just from your own head. Okay, And sometimes we have big heads and everything. They can see shiny big head here. But really it's nice to have um, that stuff to back up this, this big shiny head, right? Um, we can all speak as if we know exactly what we're talking about, but when you have an actual study of theology, you can tell the students, again, not with pride, but with authority, you know, here is who, here's what Saint so-and-so said, it's in this book, I found it in this resource. And that way they're not just getting information, but they're receiving an actual resource. So when we talk about the Holy Spirit, and I can tell them about um, Saint Gregory's, Saint uh, Gregory's uh, orations, and I can tell him here is the fifth oration about the Holy Spirit. Now they can not just hear a sentence from me; they can go and pick up an actual thing to read and study. And they've they've gotten more than just a sentence in a Sunday school class. And so that's been.
program and to manage that program. And so we follow the modules that the diocese had put together, but we expand upon them a bit and we make it more than just material. We teach servants how to become servants through the material that we're teaching. So I taught patristics and uh, church history. Um, and those are the two classes I tend to TA the most. I, I TA at the school now. Um, and those are the two classes I tend to TA the most, um, anything history and patristics related. But I've done apologetics and liturgics and other stuff too. But my main focus is patristics and history. Um, and so I've taught those two modules so far. And God willing, we'll teach dogmatics next. Um, so when we, when we do those uh, modules, we can, we can show them... Um, resources that go along with it and so they they've learned that material and it, it helps them prepare to be better servants and if any of them want to go to acts we always and i told michelle this i'm a walking advertisement for acts because anybody who asks i'm just like yeah there's a good program you can go to and you don't have to spend forever taking it's only a year and a half or if you want to do the certificate programs which i'm sure you've talked about already there is easier you know certification programs there's a master's program there's another master's program there's lots of ways to learn the material um, and so that's, that's been for me the benefit and the grace of the program. And like I said, it's really designed for anyone, young or old. Um, and as a matter of fact, I've had a, a couple of students come to the classes who want to give me, uh, who want to write a paper, um, especially in the history class. Deacon Severus allows um, Arabic research papers. Um, if, because, because the church history class, I know this is HTC, so Arabic's not a big deal here, but, but still, it's nice to know that that's available, and I've had students who wanted to submit resources in Arabic, um, and we have uh, people like me and others in the program who are very able to uh, look at things like this, so it's just, I, I want to emphasize that it's universal. It's, there's a lot of availability for people to do what they want, um, and I know for a fact, even when we were a small program, we're the same way as we got bigger, there's a tremendous amount of flexibility in the office. They... They go out of their way to make sure you can you can do your classes and graduate while being a at least reasonable student. So um, there's a lot of flexibility, a lot of ability for the for the for people to enter the program and graduate successfully. Um, even if you're not valedictorian, um, this is just you know I just, I think I just I, I I embody a person who can work and be married and do all these things and yet somehow find this kind of success. I'm not that smart. I, I'm. I, my my regular job is I work in meat factories. I, I'm a, I, I, I'm a meat inspector. Uh, I work for the USDA. I'm a federal investigator through the USDA. So I audit, inspect, investigate slaughterhouses and meat factories. There's one right here in Chino. There's actually two in Chino. Um, and so I'm a meathead for a living. Like it's it's that's the truth. Um, yet somehow I can get two master's degrees, two bachelor's degrees, and all this stuff. You can do it. That's that's the truth. Okay. So that's my long spiel. Hope I didn't take too much time. I'm here for questions. Thank you, guys. <laughs> any, any questions for Carolos? Yeah. Study of the Fathers, the Church Fathers. Yes. Yeah, it's just, and there's Metristics, which is Study of the Church Mothers as well. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good question, Max. Uh, Claudio, next. Thank you, Carolos, so much. Okay, we do have a study um, abroad course. This is a trip that's going to be May 16th through the 26th in Jerusalem. You do prior, uh, you do have to be a student enrolled in a program to attend this trip. Um, His Grace Bishop Carolos will, will will tour with you. There's going to be a, a big bus or two. Um, and spaces are limited. You actually get lectures in the buses. Exams will happen in the buses, like oral exams. Um, it's it's an unbelievable trip. It's an entire guided tour, um, and so this is an incredible opportunity to to learn and to visit Jerusalem. Uh, next, please. Um, with regards to course payments and financial assistance, um, we don't have any state or federal financial aid. However, uh, there are a number of ways to help pay for tuition. Um, the, the tuition for each program is listed on the screen. Um, I do want to mention that auditing a course is another really nice option. So if you are not interested in enrolling in a program, you can actually take any course that acts for a flat fee of $400, you get access to all course content, lectures, 
you just will not be graded on any material. So you will not have to do a research paper. You will not have to take exams unless you want to, but your, your grades will not be recorded um, in the grade book. So that's a really nice option if there's a course that you're, you're really interested in but are not interested in pursuing um, a program. So tuition is listed on the screen there. In addition, you'll have uh, certain fees applied every semester. $50 technology fee, $70 library fee. Um, payment plans are available. Um, we have a number of parish partners. So ACTS has worked with um, the all the dioceses and secured uh, parish partnerships with the different churches to uh, support their our students. And so we have churches pay for one course sometimes, two courses, and maybe even entire programs. Um, so we do have that. And then we have a number of scholarships available as well. So we have a Pope Shenouda III um, International Scholarship, we have a Dean Scholarship, and we have a need-based scholarship as well. Next, please. Um, application deadline um, is December 12th in order to study on January 9th. And we work on a rolling admissions basis, and so you can apply at any time, and we can admit you, and you can register for courses. Next, please. And that is it. Thank you. If you have any questions, you can email studentaffairs at axe.school. I want to just open it up to anyone that has questions for the whole team. Um, any questions at all? Or Car and Carolos? Oh, thanks. <laughs> any questions at all? Is the master's degree accredited? Great question. So, <laughs> AXE is currently undergoing accreditation right now. The staff is working very hard. Uh, we plan to submit the application for accreditation in January, and then it'll take 10 months from there um, to receive accreditation. We're not expecting any issues. But of course, there there may be. But we are on track to uh, be accredited very soon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So th if you receive a master's degree through ACTS and it's not officially accredited, the degree will not be accredited. Um, you have to enroll during accreditation. It hasn't been a problem thus far, unless you're interested in transferring into a PhD program not through ACTS. Uh, you know, we have a lot of students holding off on ACTS to develop the PhD program, um, but if you're looking to further your studies the PhD route, it does need to be accredited, but we will be there very soon. Good questions. Any other questions? Um, I did leave these little slips on the table here. Um, this is just an interest form, your name, email, program of interest, and then we've got some like brochures to take home. Um, any other questions we can answer? Yeah. So accreditation is, a, is um, something that I asked about as well. There was, there was talk, and I'm not sure if that's still the case yet, but there was word that, that they would backwards accredit some programs or, or not, that's not for sure. Maybe not? Because th there was there was a, a word on, a, on on them back accrediting up to a certain year because the Ax has been in the process of accreditation for a while. So this isn't like oh we just submit an application in January because we feel like it. It's been like a two plus year process they've been working on it. So I'd heard that they were going to back credit some degrees, but don't take my word for that. But the other thing I was going to say is as far as accreditation goes, as long as you're if you're going to do a PhD and it's not through Ax once they have it, um, that's the only time that it really matters. But as far as um, the worthiness of your degree out of ACTS, um, it, it's worth a lot where it matters. So it's worth a lot here in our diocese. It's worth a lot for Emba Yusuf in the, in the Southern Diocese. It's worth a lot basically in the U.S. and Canada. Okay, ACTS may not be formally accredited through the accreditation process, but um, where it matters for all of us here, it, ACTS is, is the big one. Um, that's where, what's the name everybody recognizes as far as all the dioceses in the, in the country. They each have their own little seminary that's in, in different states, like the one in Tennessee, one in Florida, one in Texas, but everybody recognizes it's us, and there's one more, I think, in Virginia, uh, Holy Sophia or something like that, yeah. There's only two that really have that name and recognition in the, in the country, 
and acts as one of them. So where accreditation really matters, that's what we have basically. So just wanted to add that. He's so, he's so right. We do have a number of students, even though they have closer theological schools, attend ACTS. Uh, another question? So it's a, about nine hours with lectures and studying or research papers um, per week. Per course. Per, per week, per course. Any other questions? All right, we'll be around. The team and I will be around. Thank you all so much for listening. Thank you. <laughs> hold it. No, hold it. Hold it till the orange.